continuing here today. Richmond, you're welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Yael. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting to have you back in the studio. Last week, we had so much to share. This week, what we want to do is to be able to go straight to the conversation, right. not spend too much time, right. and then give our listeners enough time to react and to also get interactive. Excellent. So, I mean, I was going to say that, you know, did you have any experiences during the week where you got um, calls to consult for talent? So many, so many, <laughs> after so the many, show. yes, after the show, so right. many. I don't know how they got my number anyway, but... We put it out, or didn't we? I, think I don't we did. think so. We didn't. Okay. Maybe so maybe we should put it out a number of A number of um, chief executives and HR managers. Right. And right. so it looks like it's going down well with the people. And that's what it's about. I mean, to build companies, build entrepreneurs, build our nation, right. Ghana. We'll do that from here, right, right from here in the right, studio. Right, <laughs> okay. Right, right. So um, last week, just a quick recap of what we did last week, if mm. you like, for just two minutes. So, and then we go so basically today. last week, we were trying to look at the entire overview of talent management. And we, we went through the cycle itself. Mm. And so today, we are going to take the specific components of talent management. And then we'll pick each of them. It's a bit... Um, voluminous. The content is uh, quite a lot, so I just want to take my time and go straight into that. Now, there are a number of things that matter in talent management, but for profitability, these are the ones we want to look at mm. um, in this short time. The first is talent acquisition. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing that if you want to manage your business and your talent in such a way that it is linked to the bottom line being profitable, then you are looking at talent acquisition. I'll explain that. Then the next thing we look at is talent retention. Talent retention. So you look at how to get the best talent, attract them, and most importantly, how to retain them because the cost of attracting talent is quite expensive. And so if you just focus on acquiring them and then the next moment they are just leaving the organization, then it's going to affect your bottom line, your profitability. So we'll look at talent retention. Then from there, we'll look at performance management. So what exactly do we do in terms of how the talents work so that ultimately their outputs and their outends reflect on the business growth and its profitability? Then we'll look at the fourth one, which is career development. So how do you um, even turn around non-performing talents so that they can be guided to grow and deliver on what you want. And even to straighten up and to guide and guard those who are high flyers, but sometimes they, they do not maximize their efforts on areas that matter to the organization. So that's ca career development. And then ultimately for today, we'll look at the next key component, which is onboarding, um, offboarding and succession planning. Offboarding and succession planning. So if you look at these five components you are going to look out for in this session, then you notice that in this whole cycle, there is entry, which constitutes the onboarding, then there is a growth midterm, and then there is the offboarding on the succession plan. So this is a 360 degree kind of component that we are looking at. Now, for every business that is listening or watching now, I want you to know that you should have a people strategy dashboard so that as I share on these components, you can activate those points on your dashboard. And your people strategy dashboard is like um, a place where you are able to map every single talent from the least to the greatest. And you map them as to the specific goals you want the organization to achieve and how profitable every single talent is to the organization. So if I have 10 people working for me, I should be able to tell what specifically everybody's effort is contributing to the organizational profit output. I should be able to do that. And I map them deliberately on my people strategy dashboard. So if you have done that, then the next critical thing we have to understand are the key components we are going to be talking about. So when we talk about talent acquisition, which is the first component we are looking at today, we are looking at how you recruit, how you negotiate benefits and, and terms, and then how you onboard new employees. Now here, I want you to know that in any organization, you must make up your mind and understand that people will leave. People will leave either due to ill health. They will leave either due to better career opportunities. They will leave um, sometimes because of dismissal or ill behavior. Or even they will leave because of retirement. And so you must always be in 
a talent acquisition mode all the time. And you should have a shadow replacement kind of strategy for any talent because you'll be surprised that the one you trust most or the one you can almost think will not leave the next moment is actually bringing their, this, their, their resignation letter tomorrow. And so you shouldn't be taken by surprise on any talent at all. So in your, in your people strategy dashboard, you should be able to tell for every single talent a replacement plan for them at any time T so that either of the instances i have narrated which will make them move on if they come up or they trigger up you are good to go so in doing that then your talent acquisition plan should be that from the word go for every single person on any job role you must clarify their jds as much as you can be clear about what exactly their job descriptions are yeah I, i've consulted for many organizations and many times you notice that Lack of performance is linked to the lack of clarity in what exactly the individual was employed to do. Because today he's doing this, the next moment he's doing that. And so there is no clarified job description for the role that the person is on. So from every level of the organization, in terms of acquisition, a strategy for you, make sure you can clearly define what job role everyone is supposed to do. And it's on top of their mind. And with time, sometimes in organizations, roles change. Sometimes deliverables change. When they do, issue new JDs for them so that people know that, okay, I used to do ABC. Now I'm adding DEF. So it's clear on the mind of the employer and it's also clear on the mind of the employee. So for talent acquisition, clarify your JDs. The next thing is that when you trigger um, an acquisition plan because somebody has left or somebody has given you a notice to move on, the next thing you have to do is to make sure that Every application detail you want to put in for new recruits is done in such a way that you are able to put it into channels that will attract the best fits. Usually we don't take, we just leave that to consultants or we give it to um, outsource agencies and just tell them the kind of person we want. And we don't pay much particular attention about the kind of material that is coming in that is even applying for the role that we need to do. You must deliberately put in place system that will trigger for you the kind of individual you want in the acquisition process after you have defined the JD so that you don't just pick one out of any of the applications that have come, but you deliberately decide on who qualifies to have put in the application and it helps you to attract the best. Then the next thing is that you should be involved in the application reviews. Don't just leave the decision of talent acquisition even to the HR managers. And here I'm talking about HR managers that are external. If it's internal, then your HR manager can do the CV, the, the selection and all that up to a point. And based on the level of the talent, either a senior management executive role, then we can say even the chief executive and the finance head should be able to give an eye as to which kind of person we are bringing in. So then you look at clarifying JDs, you look at the collection of the application materials in a way that is so organized and it tells who is coming. And you look at reviewing the applications yourself with your team. And then the last three will be that you must make sure that there is not just a one-time interview, depending on the level. So you can have a telephone conversation, you can have a virtual conversation, but whatever it is, before you issue an, an application or an offer, make sure that whoever is going to be supervising that talent has a one-on-one -on -one encounter with that person. So sometimes just the looks, sometimes just the attitude, sometimes just the orientation, the mindset, the kind of culture the person has, and everything will come up at the face-to-face -face engagement. And it helps you, the person, to get the best talent and the best fit so you can click and mark this portion of talent acquisition. Then when you are done with that, do well to do your background checks. Many people submit CVs and when the HR managers or CEOs pick them and they are fine, they perform very well at interviews and things like that, there is no background check. Background checks are postdated. Though the person starts to work quickly and then later, subsequently, they do background check. But it's important to do some checks, even sometimes to authenticate the qualities, to authenticate the backgrounds, to authenticate the experiences, even the educational qualifications and things. And these things should be done prior to the person kickstarting with. And when that is done, it helps you again to know who you are bringing on board. And then you can now move on to the written agreement and written outcomes. When that is done, make sure that you also welcome the new hire via mail, via phone, and physically. So that is the first key component in managing your talent for profitability. 
From there, you move to talent retention. And in this retention process, maybe four things I want to share. Recruiting people is expensive. I've said that. When anybody leaves, you are going to be spending about 70% of whatever you pay them to recruit a replacement. And usually, you are going to match the same amount or even pay more. And so, you should be very particular about retaining. Many chief executives and senior managers really, um, to, as a show of strength, don't bother much when they <laughs> notice that there's a lot of people putting in their um, resignation and they want to say they are moving on. Well, the organization can't move on. But there is a cost lag. Remember, we are targeting managing talents to profitability. And so, you remember, you would have spent on recruiting and you would have spent on training and you would have spent on investing in a number of things for the person. So, don't be too quick to bluff off or to write off um, people who just go and rather invest in retaining them. Do surveys, sometimes put in um, 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 an invisible survey, autonomous survey so that you'll be able to <coughs> even tell whether staff are happy or what is accounting for people living. So that is retention and four things. One, if you want to retain your talent so that the cost that will hit your bottom line doesn't affect you, know that you provide continual training to your people continual training and it doesn't even have to be professional training it has to be hands-on training that makes them work faster and better the next thing is to promote inclusivity you have to promote inclusivity everybody in the organization should own the dream and the goals of the organization and they should feel that they are involved they should feel that their contributions matter and so you should deliberately create systems that make even the least person in terms of ranking feel that he's involved he's part of the organization and his contribution account for the bottom line the next thing is to show appreciation and here don't think that retention has to do only with increasing remuneration or salary or increasing benefits not at all you see, you just have to show appreciation to staff, sometimes supervisors. Just saying thank you for the guy who was able to deliver ahead of schedule means so much to the person. And occasionally, chief executives coming down to gather the staff and tell them that, look, I appreciate your effort. I appreciate what you do. Sometimes, chief executives can say that, well, that is why you receive your salary. That is fine. But if you want to retain staff, let them know you care. Sometimes, the form of appreciation may mean just spending some <coughs> lunch with them. Sometimes it may mean just having a Friday happy hour with them. Sometimes it may mean just saying thank you, as simple as that. And sometimes even acknowledging them publicly as a one-minute manager, acknowledging them when they do right things and saying it publicly, rather than just being in a hurry to reprimand when they do wrong. When they do good too, appreciate it publicly, and that show of appreciation helps people to stay and then ultimately give constructive feedback. I have consulted for many organizations and usually you notice that people don't leave organizations. If there are about 100 people leaving, you will notice that more than 60% leave because of their immediate supervisor. And so you have to be careful in retaining your talent to always get a supervisor who spends time to give feedback on tasks. Sometimes the feedback may be hard, sometimes it may not be pleasant, but you must learn to have difficult conversations that get staff to know that what they are doing you don't appreciate or what they are doing is not good enough. Because if you don't give feedback and you expect them to now get to know on the day of performance management review, so maybe a staff starts started doing a task he didn't do well. You never gave feedback until the end of month review. Then you come back to now give a very negative feedback. That will mean that you are waiting for the person to fail. But the essence of which will be the next key of even performance management is to be able to watch and coach the person so that they can correct their errors and their mistakes through feedback and will be able to deliver at the end of the day. So that you don't give feedback after the fact. You give feedback daily. You give feedback on the job. It may not be pleasant, but the essence of it is so that you can get them to do the right thing and you retain them. And when you are able to do that, you get staff to do what they are supposed to do and it hits profitability. The next thing is to keep salary and benefits competitive. So under talent retention, always be on the market and be sniffing and be looking out for that what are people taking in this same industry on this same role and am I shortchanging my team? Is it competitive enough? Because if you are not interested, they will find out anyway. There are colleagues somewhere else um, in competitive industries or sometimes offers from other places will come. So don't just bury your head in the job and not be bothered about 
am I competitive enough in terms of remuneration or not? Put your mind out there, be open-minded, and figure out if you can also keep salary and benefits competitive. Again, build strong corporate culture, build a solid brand, and build a lasting value. If you can do that also, then every staff wants to associate themselves with you, and so you retain them. And then lastly, under talent retention, provide career growth opportunities provide career growth opportunity you know people want to grow people want to see that i got into this company 10 years ago and i've not been on this same role for the last 10 years I'm, I, I i may not change in title but my responsibilities and my experiences might have increase that makes the person satisfied on the job and you get many people even organizations sometimes not because they are going to get any change in salary but because they are getting challenging tasks that will make them become better so give them that opportunity in-house and you'll be able to retain them if you have been able to do that then what i'm saying is that measure yourself at least every year to just check if your drivers of change are good enough and will keep the people um, staying. And for everybody, every single staff that leaves, make sure that your people strategy dashboard is able to pick up nuggets of why they are leaving. Either it is because of anything negative or positive so that it helps you to retain. From there, the next key component is performance management. Performance management for many years has become a difficult thing for companies to manage. Performance management becomes like a ritual and um, you wait at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, half year, end of year, and people queue and then go to hear what their performance outcomes are. And sometimes they fear the day they will sit over their performance contract with their bosses. Mm -hmm. And it is in those times, in that meeting, that they realize some things they were supposed to do that they didn't do. Why? Because performance management programs are made not to look as simple and as relevant to the organizational goals. Mm -hmm. But what is performance management? Performance management is simply the outcomes that are expected to hit the profitability of the organization in terms of daily routines. That is performance management. And so you have to make a performance management program a live thing that happens daily. Active. Active. It's a living document. It's not something that shows up during reviews only. But the performance management should show up in the daily routine of mm. staff. And it is not to punish. It is to reward. It is to align. And it is to clarify. So make your performance management exciting. That the staff himself, before he comes to the table mm. to meet a supervisor over performance management, should be able to measure himself by the clarity himself. So as he's coming here now, he knows that I am not making my, my bonuses this man why because he's able to measure the clarity of measurement of performance outcomes should not be residing only in the bosom of the supervisor so that it is a supervisor that will tell whether you did well or didn't do well when performance management is like that people don't feel fulfilled they may not say it but they don't see any clarity between what they are supposed to do and what they is expected of them so make sure you provide a clear communication of what success looks like and it must be measurable in goals and in roles so that the expectations are set both in the minds of the employee and in the minds of the employer. And at the end of the day, everybody lives the outcomes of the performance management. So almost every now and then, it is daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, half yearly, and end of year. So just make sure your performance management fits this kind of description and you'll be amazed that every staff will be working towards bottom line profitability and performance management becomes a daily thing. After that, the next thing you look at is career development. Career development. And here I want to say that career development is so important in your profitability because remember that whatever your talent do would either cost you or will bring you income. And so career development is about how well you sharpen their effort, how well you sharpen their skill set, how well you sharpen their understanding and get them to do so much at the least cost. So that your bottom lines are profitable. And so don't see career development as a cost item to you only. No. Well, somebody was saying that, um, how about if we train these people, we develop them, and the next moment they leave. Another person was also said, how about if you don't also train them and they become crude, they don't become sharp and they stay on the job? Who loses? The organization loses. Precisely. So develop them and let them deliver for you. Even if they are going to go, they would have delivered on the time. And usually if you develop talent, they stay with you because they get to know that they are becoming better. And so you should make sure that every employee is developed and they see themselves as valued in one way or the other. And it doesn't have to be professional courses. I've said that. It sometimes 
sometimes have to be new challenges, new tasks, new opportunities in the same organization internally that makes them do things better. And lastly, under the key component, we have on uh, offboarding and succession planning. Offboarding and succession planning. Now, hmm, this is a difficult thing usually CEOs don't want to hear, but you should know that for every talent, you can't keep them forever. Mm. Either retirement will hit them, medical issues will hit them, new opportunities will hit them, or even you will dismiss them. <laughs> so that, that sounds like a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so at any time, T, you must be prepared for offboarding mm. and succession planning. Many organizations don't handle offboarding well. Mm. The moment the employee comes to tell the supervisor that I have to leave because of reasons A, B, C, or sometimes they don't even give you reason. Immediately, there's a sharp enmity between the supervisor and the person. It's always the case, isn't it? It shouldn't be, because then you didn't anticipate it. You didn't anticipate that out of these talents, any of these ones can leave any time T. It doesn't matter mm. what. The one who may be your favorite staff, the next moment can be coming to you and turning their resignation. Now, if you don't make it look exciting and as expected, and you don't plan for it, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll notice that many talents will not tell you when they are about leaving. They will tell you just when it's a day or two mm. for them to move, so mm. that it doesn't matter the consequence, they can move on. But it is also an opportunity for you to get to know why they are leaving. It's an opportunity for you to get the other people to know that even when I'm leaving, I'm treated well, so that when they have left, the advantage of saying good things about the organization, the organization culture, the, the, the opportunities that the organization can have, you can still have them. So have it in mind that every talent can leave you at any time, T, for many reasons. And so for you on your people's strategy dashboard, for every employee, you should be able to figure out a shadow replacement at any time, T. You give yourself all the scenarios. And in your, in your people's strategy dashboard, you say that, assuming this person leaves, what happens to this role? Internally, externally, what do I do? So that at any time, you are not, you are not surprised by off-boarding. And when they happen, these are some of the things you have to do professionally. You have to have an off-boarding checklist. So you announce the employee's last date internally to management and all the people like maybe the IT team and the security so that um, it doesn't go against the organization anyway. You determine the status of projects that are on the desk of that person who is about living. So you know what is outstanding and what is not outstanding. You know what must be done and what has not been done. You set deadlines for those outstanding tasks for the person to do. And then you retrieve, you work towards retrieving every company property from the very day up to the very last day. And if possible, be between uh, the last two, three days, you change your passwords, you, you ensure that you have all the employees and um, the employees' current address and phone numbers, and then make sure you communicate what benefits they are getting as they are living, and then plan a proper goodbye gathering, even if it's just among the team the person was working with, and conduct a short exit interview. Don't just let them go. You'll be surprised what they can tell you that can save you. You don't know. You may never know that the rest of the team members are all sitting on an exit strategy, but you don't know because you don't have a pleasant atmosphere to offboard. And so the guy won't tell you. The next moment, you see the next person is also coming. The next one is, but if you have a good offboarding strategy, you will even be hinted off if the staff and the team members are planning of anything like that and you'll be able to stop guard it. Now, that is one side of offboarding. The next side is succession planning. So if that person is leaving, have you deliberately put in place for every unit, every department, every team who can take over the role either at the same level or even better. And that should be done in your people strategy dashboard. Other than that, when the person leaves at any time, the lag, the execution lag that will hit you before you replace would affect your bottom line. And when that happens, the organization is the one that loses. So these are very critical things anybody yeah. should know so that you will be able to manage your talents for profitability. The first one we talked about, if I should just recap, yeah, is right. talent acquisition. And it borders on recruiting, negotiating, and onboarding new employees. Mm -hmm. The next one is talent retention. That is about how you keep most of the talent. The next one is about performance management. How you put together an evaluating system that makes staff excited and want to even do more. And then a career development task. And then ultimately an offboarding and a succession planning system. So this constitutes the critical, most important um, key components of talent management. So much information in so little time. You've shared so much, and I'm sure that our listeners are waiting to get interactive. We're going to be opening the phone lines, but before we do that, we just want to take a quick break. We'll be right back. 
master classes and sessions, and you can interact with us via Facebook at Joy Business or at Joy 99.7 FM. And if you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM. Don't forget to hashtag Masterclass. You can also send us a text on 1422 across all network or join the WhatsApp conversation on 0244-340437. And our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass on your Superstation. So I have some great news for you. Do you have any motor vehicle of any kind? Because if you do, then Goyle's new Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Leaves are the best engine oils for your vehicle. They're specially engineered engine oils which efficiently work on all your modern petrol and diesel engines. They clean, they protect, they reduce fuel consumption, they prolong oil chain intervals, and they also enhance your engine performance from when you start up to when you switch off. So go to any Goyle filling station today and grab the new Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 engine oils for superior vehicle performance. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. We're interactive now. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302216541. That's 0302216541. You can also send us a comment or your questions on 055 quadruple one nine nine seven. That's 055 quadruple one nine nine seven. If you're driving, please pack up before you text. Don't text and drive at the same time because we want you to arrive alive. But so much information shared in so little time. I want us to get interactive. Let's ask questions. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. 0302216541. I have my first question while we wait for the phone answering Richmond. Succession planning is key, like you've mentioned, and everyone should anticipate that someone will leave one day. I suppose we all know that, but when it happens, it's a different feeling. What would you do? And I want to ask a lot of questions, so let's answer them quickly. What would you do in a situation where you've got supervisors at different levels who do not share information? So, for example, if you've got identified people as successors, but the supervisors are not sharing information. With who? With, with who? them. So, for example, you've got, let's say, a number one, a substantive and an assist or a successor. First of all, HR practice says do not let a successor know they are a successor. Number two, do not let the one they are going to succeed know that they are going to succeed because all sorts of things can go wrong. But they are not sharing information. How do you address this as a business owner? So, as a business owner, your succession planning is not just... Um, um, a, a, a written document. Okay, hold that thought for me. I've got a caller on the line. Let's talk to. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you could just speak up for me a bit. Your name, where you're calling from, sir? Uh, my name is Chidiak. I'm calling from South London. Oh, Chidiak. Very long time, my brother. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Talk to me, my brother. Yeah, uh, I want to know if you have a talent that is ambitious, mm. wants to leave. Mm-hmm. How do you retain such a talent? Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Straightforward. If you have a talent, super ambitious, wants to leave, how do you retain Figure such a talent? Figure out what is driving him out and then see if it has to do with just ambition or it has to do with um, rewards mm. or it has to do with value and development. Mm. Then see how you can meet it because the moment they are ambitious, then it means maybe they have skill sets that you need also. And you have to learn how to manage high flies. And maybe you're not challenging them enough. You're not. So you, you, have to, you have to look inward, get to know their concerns through a survey sometimes mm. and have one-on-one conversations with them. And that is why you build in mentorship systems mm. in organizations so that they can have somebody they listen to, right. somebody they follow who can guide them and manage their ambition mm. to, to suit into the vision of the organization. When a person is ambitious... It means he wants to become something. Mm. But if he can't see what he wants to become in the organization's vision, then you are going to lose him. Mm-hmm. But if he notices that his ambition is hidden in the organization's vision, mm-hmm. then he will drive his ambition so that the organization's vision can be realized. Yeah. So you have to find a way to net his ambition into the vision of the organization so he sees himself in the organization's picture. If that doesn't mm. happen, it's just about the organization, then you are going to lose high flies. So, Chidiak, that's your answer right there. You answered the question about uh, supervisors not sharing so information. So, I was saying that succession planning is not something you do by happenstance. Mm. And you don't even need to say it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the roles and the task you give, and mm. sometimes deliberate artificial fires you create among the team, mm. give people, and it doesn't have to be one person who is next in line, but it gives people the ability to work independently with or without their supervisor. Mm-hmm. So, you can have that in your strategy dashboard room. But you don't really not you don't have to tell this person mm. that you are next because the next in command can leave the next moment. <laughs> but you have to have in your master plan mm-hmm. what will make this person take over without having announced it mm-hmm. or without having to share. To any create situations that that 
give them the opportunity yes. to like so deliberately for example you can deliberately take a manager off a particular tax one day mm. and then give another person the opportunity to take it and see the outcomes it's mm. a deliberate effort it guides you to know how well they are placed to take over if anything happens even you as a, as a chief mm. executive occasionally you should step out and see what happens in your absence right i've got another caller on the line good afternoon you're welcome to master class hi good afternoon right this is arnold from tema is it yes talk to me arnold okay yeah very insightful information um the fact of the matter is these are not practical in our organization. I mean, we find ourselves in companies where um, there are no clear policies. Mm. You don't have, I mean, any even exit interviews mm. when someone wants to, to resign. Okay. Right. Um, so you want to resign, the door is open for you. You can you can move on. <laughs> I mean, succession planning. You will have a superior who cannot even bring you up, cannot mm. build you to take up his. That's not challenge you enough. Yes, yeah. So practically, we don't have this system in, in our organization. I don't know which company in Ghana does that, but mm. um, it, where I find myself, <laughs> it doesn't work. Mm, mm. So Arnold, what do we do? How can we make the? How can we make it better? That's a conversation. How can we make it better? What do you think yeah. we can do? do? Do we do we have a national body who I mean I mean an HR body? Who well, there's the Institute of Human Resource Management practitioners for a start. Okay. Um, then they need to check on these companies, what they are doing. Mm. If you look into their books, right. I mean, you can go to some companies, they don't even record um, resignations. Mm. Mm. Ten over mm. analysis, they don't talk about it. Okay. So if there's okay. a professional body, they should really look into it. Mm. Arnold, which industry, don't, don't tell me the name of your company, which industry do you work in? Um, <laughs> it, it, will, it will still bring it up. So it will still bring it up. Okay, no worries. No worries, my brother. Private or public? Sure. Thank you for calling, Arnold. Okay, so that was Arnold. Um, didn't want to share too much information, but I get his point. Um, I suppose the point is that we don't, we are not there yet, but we will stop talking about it because we want to be able to become better. Right, right. <laughs> and I, I can also challenge Arnold that mm. there are a number of organizations, private, I must say, yes. that are getting these That's things true. done. And I, I've true. consulted for 101 of them That's true. who are making sure these things happen. Mm. Just as they have been narrated, performance mm. contracts that are reviewed, performance contracts that are clear, mm -hmm. onboarding details when you are leaving. Job descriptions yes, which are clear. When you are leaving, when you yeah. are leaving the organization, there's a job, in, there's yeah. an exit interview. We do surveys to check. Mm. So if you're a chief executive and you're listening, take advantage of this master class mm -hmm. and activate this thing because you may not see it, but it affects mm. your bottom line. Mm. I was going to ask another question, but if you just mentioned something. How do people reach you after this program? You can uh, is, um, you or FLF right. You can you can just call zero two zero one nine one 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 nine one. You can take that again slowly. Zero two zero one nine one 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 nine one. And you can go to YouTube if you if you type Richmond Kwame Frimpong. Okay. You, you immediately you subscribe. We'll reach out to you and help okay. you out. Okay. So that's some information there. If you need help, just reach out, and Richmond and team are happy to help. You talked about giving notice and um, doing all the right things before a person leaves. I've experienced personal situations where people are giving a year's notice because they were in very good terms. There was no malice when they were leaving. I've also experienced situations where they left before their boss found out that they had left. There was a letter under somebody's door the following morning. Which is best, given the circumstance that there is always immediate malice when an announcement is made that someone is leaving? Is it better, both for an employee and an employer, to have long notice, adequate notice, or short notice, or no notice? <laughs> You see, remember the key components of talent management. Mm. The first is talent acquisition. Mm. And I narrated in first onboarding, mm. there are specific things that must be outlined. And one of the critical things that must be outlined is how you exit. Mm -hmm. It is part of your application. It's part of your appointment offer. And the things it's part you of the contract you sign. It is. So uh, if, you are, if you don't outline anything that binds a person, then they can leave anyhow and it affects you, the organization. Mm -hmm. And it affects the employee also. But if it's binding, for example... You, you leave and you give a month's notice and you don't do. What does it mean? You, you Remember, you are going to be taking your, your provident fund mm -hmm. or you are going to be taking a reference letter one day. A reference letter, yeah. And remember, you can't just walk in and say you want it if you didn't leave well. Mm -hmm. And so it starts with the onboarding contract and the office we give to staff and how spelled out they are in how you exit. And then managers should also grow and make it even an advantage to them when people are leaving. Mm -hmm. When people are leaving, it's not all bad. Sometimes when people are leaving, if you have it captured properly like we have discussed, 
then you can pick up silent and important information from mm. these people and they can become your mouthpiece in terms of your culture and brand when they leave mm. and it, it, it also helps them when they have to now take references because if they are going to a good organization they will definitely find out from their old organization where they're coming from yes, and, and how, how well they, they did. did so then if they also know then they will do well precisely I'm sure I can take one more phone call numbers to call 0302216541 give us a quick call or send us a comment on 0, 055 quadruple one nine nine seven i've got another question for you um this one says is the issue of of performance management it says that people often feel that in performance management the supervisors keep shifting the goalpost you 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 mentioned something about this happening when there's no clarity right um of purpose clarity of job description right. clarity of assignment can right. you just talk I about agree, it i agree i agree and it happens yeah. in many organizations that when even supervisors notice that the targets are just being blown over roof and people are meeting them, mm. when they come for reviews, then they begin to change them. Now, when you do that, the culture of the organization in terms of the trust that your staff or employees have in you mm. would never be there and you miss it forever. Mm. So what you have to do is to make sure that you stick to the deliverables that are signed in a performance management contract. Mm -hmm. You don't change goalposts. Even if you have to change goalposts, you have to reward for targets that are met. Now, sometimes so people change because they didn't define what success looks like. And so, um, there is a new definition of success or target met anytime we come for review. So, it's a deliberate ambiguity. It is. It's deliberate because it inures to the benefit of the employer. And that shouldn't be. Because performance management always, remember, mm -hmm. is stuck to the profitability. Mm -hmm. So if you keep doing that, you are not hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. The staff will now pretend to be delivering. And the next moment they come, they will not have met it. Who does it affect? The profitable bottom line. People leave people. People don't leave organizations. Talk to me about that. People leave 30 people. Seconds. People leave people. And, and you must always know that people buy into people before they buy into their vision. Mm. Many people stay in organizations because of the people they, they report to. And this is statistical. Statistically, globally, anybody who leaves an organization, one number one reason is who the person is reporting to. And so for everybody who is supervising another person, you must have the person's real needs at heart. Mm. And rise through building a relationship with a person. If you are just interested in tasks and outcomes, and you are not interested in anything that concerns the person, then people will just believe in you. Mm -hmm. And the people that manage the supervisors. So if I'm a CEO, I should be able to account and mark anybody who supervises people by the turnouts that affect the department. So success is not just about achieving the goal, but success is about your people management skills. And the moment I notice people leaving you, I should be able to grade you against that. So people are interested in committing to making sure that those they work with work well with the key components in managing your talent. So we'll be sharing with you what to do right in managing your talents for profitability. What to do right in managing your talents for profitability. That's a conversation next week on Masterclass. This has been Masterclass on your Superstation. We'll be spending time with Richmond Kwame Frimpong. We're back on your radio same time next week. My name is Yabana. For up next, we continue with The Ignition with Sami Forson. Thank you for listening and see you same time next week. Thank you.